Hey guys, I'm Dylan with Selene Americas, and here's my friend Paul. And we are in the engine room of 6048, which is, as you can see, deep in build. Um, we thought we'd give you an update on the engine room and we'd have a little bit of a talk about the fuel system on this boat. So that's what this video is gonna be. Yeah, and we uh, took you through this boat when the engine had not yet been installed, wing engine had not been installed, all these systems in here. So we wanted to kind of show work in progress, how this is evolving. And like Dylan mentioned, talk through uh, one of the systems in here. Yeah, so this boat is fitted with the, uh, so this is a John Deere 6090 in front of me. So this is our pretty typical engine for the 60 foot boats. And we, we think this is really a good fit for the boats. To my uh, right hand side, we have a Yanmar wing engine. So this is an 80 horsepower wing engine. We do something a little bit differently. We fitted the biggest alternator we can fit on it. So it's actually, um, it's actually gonna give a little bit of power to charge the batteries as well when it's running and not just be used for a uh, wing engine. So every so often we'll be able to use it to charge the batteries. We have uh, the Northern Lights generator behind me on this side. And we push the generator back a little bit into the lazarette. We're just trying to get a bit more space for the owner. We also normally, in that corner, we have water heater. Normally we took it out on this boat and we moved it up into uh, one of the tech spaces underneath the stairs that wasn't being used. And then one of the bigger changes we're making on most of the America's boats, and really most of the Celines, is we're going more and more to day tanks. So this little tank behind me is the day tank for the boat. So uh, in the past Celines, we used the port and starboard fuel tanks which are outboard of me, and that's where all the fuel came from and the engines used, and the engines would take fuel from that tank and then return them to one of those tanks as well. But that was a good system, but we want to be actually a little bit further. Um, we want more, more clean fuel. So we decided that a day tank was the way to go. Also, it reduces the condensation problems that some of the boats have with putting uh, hot fuel into a cold tank. So this little tank's our day tank. This will have a uh, this will have a bench on top of it. So again, we're in build. So we've got a magnetic sight gauge like you've seen before. This sight gauge is gonna trigger the level that we allow the day tank to stay at. So automatically running the boat, the boat will take fuel from the port or starboard fuel tanks through the fuel polishing system over here. So we're gonna decide what tank we wanna take the fuel from and where it's gonna go. This is again a cut manifold right in the middle. There's actually two manifolds. That fuel runs from one of the tanks, port or starboard. It'll run through our reverso system, which is gonna do the polishing, and then into the day tank, and that'll be automatic. So you don't do anything. Just always that day tank is gonna stay at the level we tell it to stay at. And then the fuel from the engines comes from the day tank and returns back to the day tank. So this way we ensure that we have clean fuel at all times on the vessels. So when you fill the boat, you don't really know what kind of fuel you're gonna get, especially in some of the third world countries, the fuel is um, suboptimal, would be the right word for it. So this gives us a bit of time, you can let the fuel settle. We can polish the fuel with the polishing system, but whenever we're gonna transfer fuel into that actual day tank, we know that fuel is perfectly clean. It's got no water, it's got no contaminant in it. It's clean fuel. We also have an ability to run the engines off of the tanks like we used to with an emergency feed. So we use the balancing line to fill the day tank if we lose the pumping system for it. And that's the emergency get home, fix the fuel polishing system or fix whatever problem you've got with it. Really simple. The, those two silver manifolds, you see stainless steel manifolds, the top one is the fuel supply and the bottom one is the fuel return. The fuel return, we're gonna pull the handles off of those valves because it's not something you normally touch when you're in service. You just leave the fuel return lines on. Seeing this boat's in build, you can see there's all kinds of stuff. We got the fire extinguisher, we got the main engine, fuel filters here, the reverso behind me. We have the electronics for the throttles here for the engine. We have an oil change pump over there. A nice deep bilge you can stand in right now. <laughs> we're, we're missing a shaft, so this would be a problem in a little while. Uh, we have the raw water pump for the water maker here. We have the raw water pump for the air conditioning here. This is getting changed. We don't like that arrangement. This is the fuel filter for the generator. And we have some sea strainers as well for the generator, water maker, and air conditioning. Battery switches in the corner, some chargers. Also the yeah. Maritron monitoring panels, yeah. which are subdivered at the moment. I get in trouble, but anyway, I guess I'm allowed. So we're fitting, as our recommended package in the engine room, we're fitting a monitoring screen. 
So from Meritron, so you can monitor all the engine vitals right in here. So if you're doing some service work or wondering what's not working the way you want it to, you'll be able to see it right on the screen. And then also a big alarm buzzer as well. So if things go wrong, and the, the alarm buzzer is quite loud. So a lot of times it'll be such a quiet buzzer that underway you can't hear it. So we've upgraded that as well. It's sort of part of our, our recommended package. Camera for being able to monitor the engine room remotely. Yep, so a nice wide angle Frodo camera. So that goes into the Frodo uh, electronic system. This boat has five cameras spitted on it, which is a fair bit. Yeah, um, the owner plans to circumnavigate. Uh, so spending a lot of time on this boat. And I'm just going to sit down. <laughs> and uh, uh, so really we've tried to be thoughtful working with the owner on, on all the systems that he'll need to feel safe, have a good voyage, be able to use the boat as he wants to as he travels around the world. Yeah, right in his room, he's got a Fruno 10-inch uh, uh, MFD and also another Maritron screen right in his room. So that way he can kind of look up from his bed if something's going wrong and know yeah. the condition of the vessels. Whether he's in the master state room or if he's on one of the control stations uh, or in the engine room, be able to have access to data uh, and be able to monitor all those things while underway or uh, even remotely. Yeah. And you can also see we've got the smoke alarms up as well. They went up today. So we have rate of heat rise detectors in the engine room, which is something all boats should have. One of the things that we've really changed, Dylan has changed, is making sure that we're doing auto starts on our generators, yeah. especially since we've been doing solar and lithium packages, uh, making sure we're keeping those uh, batteries topped up when needed. And then we're trying to size all the batteries on the boat so you can run the air conditioning plant overnight with the stabilizers. Not the full air conditioning plant, but air conditioning the master stateroom and uh, running this, the zero speed stabilizers without starting the generator. So we're trying for an eight hour window on that. And of course, it's really hard to predict because if you're in a really horrible anchorage and the fins are working really hard, it'll be less time. But we're, our, our goal is eight hours running zero speed moderately and running one air handler in the, uh, in the master cabin to keep the boat cold overnight without having that auto start. But even if it does change, the generators are really quiet, so it'll, it'll auto start on its own, bring the batteries up to full, and then uh, and then it'll turn off. Well, hopefully that gives you a little taste of some of the progress on this boat uh, in the engine room, as well as some of the systems and how they've been decided and, and what the systems are in here. Um, it's been really yeah. fun being able to work with Dylan and sharing all of his knowledge and working with the client to help them be able to realize uh, having the boat that will carry them around the world. And every one of these boats is custom, right? So we, we take quite a bit of time to try to understand what the owner's needs are. So building a boat is great, but kind of the most important first step for us is to really get an idea of what the owner wants to do. And then we can build the systems around that for the owner. That was the reason why this has a bigger alternator on it is because I realized on this boat, when he was doing his around the world cruise, that generator was going to be over hours. So we didn't want to rebuild the generator during the round the world cruise. We said, okay, well, how do we supplement to have more power to make sure you have what you need? Putting a larger alternator on the get home or the wing engine was a way that we could pull some hours off of that unit, put some hours on this unit that's normally just sitting doing nothing and get him all the way around the world without having to rebuild anything. Yeah, I think that was a, a very smart idea by Dylan because it's always one of the worries with uh, a wing engine is, is it actually going to be used so that it's working when you need it? This was a, a way to make sure that it was being used on a regular basis yeah. um, to not only take away some of the hours needed on the generator, but also make sure that there's regular usage of the wing engine so that if you do need to use it in an emergency, yeah. it's there and you, you feel confident that it's going to be working. This is a great engine. We're going to have lots of room to work. Um, yeah, so the workbench top, there's a worktop going on top of the day tank, probably for tool storage. There's another bench going on top of the generator for more work area. Um, all the stainless steel rails still have to go in, so there's still a lot of work to go in here, but it's starting to look like an engine room. Yeah. Cool. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this session, and yeah. please tune in to our next video. All good. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.